So in this series, we're looking at the basic principles of using a speed light, whether it's on camera, like we're seeing now, or off camera. Uh, the speed light is a, a basically a very, very simple way to actually add some extra flash into a scene or even to give full illumination. Uh, but today, specifically, I want to talk about using the kind of the bounce facility and the catch light card specifically. So if we're used to the likes of um, the on camera flash, um, by default, probably, probably when you start off, you're going to be kind of shooting directly at the subject. And you're going to think that this little flash is going to be doing its job the whole time. However, with a little bit of skill, you'll soon learn that by kind of going to a bounce facility using this catch light card, it gets the name from basically the catch light that you'll see in somebody's eyes, but it'll also push some of the bounce flash back into the actual group. So in other words, if we're kind of photographing as we are here with direct flash, this is going to illuminate it and obviously it'll go very wide, especially wide if we bring the uh, wide angle diffuser down like we're seeing here. Um, or it'll basically do as wide as it can. Obviously, if I'm using a 16 mil lens, uh, even with the diffusion cap on, it's not gonna actually kind of uh, light the whole scene, especially if I'm close up to it. But um, also, so when we're photographing groups, people can kind of get into have the habit. I wanna show some examples of kind of uh, when to use the kind of the wide angle diffuser or direct flash, or more specifically, in fact, using the likes of the catch light. To bring my catch light card back out, I just put the wide angle diffuser back in, and then I literally just pull out the two together, just let it flap down. The wide angle is back on there, but plus we've got this catch light card now. But of course, we can change the angle to bounce. Um, if you're at full ver vertical here, uh, the catch light is literally just going to put a catch light in somebody's eyes. If you've got it at the kind of the uh, next angle down, you're basically going to be able to light uh, the principles of a group close up to you, around about four to six people as a maximum. Uh, but then, of course, if you need to light up a bigger group than that, we're going to have to put the catch light down and pretty much actually go to a direct flash to light and spread across the whole group. Let's let's kind of look at some examples on that anyway. Let me just put that down for a second. So uh, here we're seeing the catalog card uh, in place and at the kind of the, ang uh, the angle uh, that is right for kind of groups. So that's the first kind of click. If your speed light basically uh, doesn't allow you to actually have an angle at all, at some stage I'd invest in a third party one, which is quite cheap. Um, but you can put like a little soft box on the front of it and things, really, a little dome even to actually diffuse the light more. And obviously all of the flashes can be modified to actually change uh, no matter what. But the catch light here will be enough for us to kind of um, uh, shoot a, a kind of a close-up group like we are here. We're in Downing Street in UK, L London, where our Prime Minister resides, and we're doing a, uh, a charity event here for kids with cancer. And we've got a famous celebrity on the left-hand side, a, a part of these kind of the Strictly Come Dancers, as it were. And then um, we can also quickly, without changing any of the actual flash then at this point, I can actually step backwards and get the slightly bigger group. So this allows me to move in and out of the actual kind of group build a build in by just using that catch light kind of bounce card to kind of give me a good illumination. Now, okay, theoretically, because of the angle of the flash at the lower part of the frame, so actually, you know, below the waist, it is going to go slightly darker as such, especially as you're close up to them or if you've got an exaggeration on the actual bounce you're going to get a little bit of vignetting at the bo bottom but basically you want to look at the faces no matter what so that little bit of vignetting at the bottom is no big deal and things so this is kind of two examples of using the uh, the catch light card another one here to kind of give you an idea of how you can move in and out without any trouble now if i need to light a group at a distance I need to use more of a direct flash so it can kind of cover the distance. So in a previous film, we've talked about, you know, the zoom facility and so on. And there's a 24 to 105 lens on the camera in the pic uh, the picture now. And as I've zoomed uh, to the 105, the flash would know that I've zoomed and it would zoom for me. And it would just put the flash into the kind of the smaller part of the frame, as it were. But uh, as far as when we're kind of um, at a lower position, 
to the subjects as well. If we use the flash um, and it's directly at them, the shadow is going to kind of go upwards. And, and really, the story of um, the flash is always in the shadow of what you're actually seeing. So if you kind of look in behind... Uh, here you can see that there's a pretty much a hard line of shadow behind her and uh, you might be able to see there's a little one behind her as well but that that is telling us that pretty much that is a direct flash you can see I'm on the staircase and I'm photographing upwards uh, but this gives me enough spread because I'm on the 24 to 105 so it's not giving me a very very hard edge sh shadow as we would know it because I'm not close up to them but it's illuminating the whole scene um, because I'm in the wide angle element of it so that's softening a little bit more in exactly the same thing if I'm shooting outside in this case number 10 um, yeah I'm the same visit with the girls uh, and basically what we've got here is that pretty much direct flash um, kind of just gives us the uh, the light in and again the story of the flash you can see the shadow coming on the right hand side so you can tell I've turned my camera in a anti-clockwise position and I've taken the photograph so hence my flash is on my left hand side so the shadow will be on my right hand side now obviously if I was uh, short, shorter or much lower down that will change the angle of the shadow as well with it but really what we're trying to do is give a good illumination when we're under very extreme uh, time restraints and in very extreme kind of conditions and things really so that's an example there so when we start to think about bouncing the light, um, we start to think about bouncing it off a ceiling. Well, that's great if the ceilings are quite low, like in a normal house, and you might just want flash to just give you some illumination and just fill in the overall kind of um, uh, shadow within the image or give you an overall illumination. Some speed lights, uh, they used to have a little catch light um, flash on the front of it in fact which would when the flash was in this position it would actually throw some flash out of the front as well to give you that little bit of catch light most flashes have uh, kind of evolved beyond that now and things but when we're in a vertical position like this um, there's very little of the angle of the flash to kind of bounce it down so be careful not getting into a habit of just going straight into this but if I was very close up to a group of say two or four and I was using this bounce flash on the likes of a lower seedling it would give me illumination but there wouldn't be much of a catch light within the eye itself but it would give me illumination if that kind of group was basically further away it would give me very beige light light in what do I mean by that very kind of bland light uh, why because the all the light is going up and then it's coming down and it's just kind of flooding the whole scene but it doesn't give us any real illumination so that is when even adding um, the catch light card back into the mix will make a difference to the actual quality of the light hitting onto the group so that's an example of where we cannot use the bouncing off the seedling because the seedlings are about 20 feet tall and I've basically got to bounce down. And here we can see how we've got good illumination of the flash on the top of the subjects here. But by the time we get down to the feet, the exposure is going uh, up less and less. And this is just working in TTL here, by, uh, by the way, on the flash, so an automatic flash. Um, you can see now... Um, even though I'm using the catch light and the camera is turned to the vertical position with my flash on the left hand side, story of the flash again, we can see it because he's illuminated more than the girl at the back on the right hand side. So because of um, the quality of CT, uh, your CCD on your camera, um, if you've got a photograph groups and you do want the likes of a vertical image or whatever it is, I'd say trying to actually shoot it in the horizontal and then crop through the vertical. Now, that kind of goes against my grain, you know that, because I always try and make you maximize your pixels that you take. But there are times when we're faced with lighting or illuminating a group and we want something specific, but we've got restrictions. So we've either got to revert to a direct flash, which, which this isn't. This is working with a catch light bounce. So that would actually give us what we can see, more light on him on the left, less light of uh, the girl at the back on the right. Whereas if we had direct flash, it would illuminate the whole of the subject fully, 
evenly-ish um, throughout the whole group. However, what it would do is give us an increased shadow behind them, especially if we're shooting from a low environment, which would show the, the kind of the uh, uh, shadow going bigger and bigger. So that's where we want to actually kind of think about, do we really want to bounce the flash um, in, in some way? And if we are going to bounce the flash, like we just saw, then let's make sure we use the catch light card to add a little bit more catch light within them. So when we're back into the catch light, you can see now I can quickly shoot between the different kind of styles. And if you're thinking about what is a catch light, it's this kind of little white dot within the eye of the subjects. That's really what you're getting. So that's where it gets its name from, the catch light, rather than a bounce card, which is designed to actually put all the flash uh, coming out of the actual speed light itself more towards the subject where the catch light is just adding some extra illumination. But that is my preferred kind of setup to kind of really get successful flash images each time. And you can work from a dark location to a, a more even lit location as such, working outside to, in, uh, to inside using that simple technique of the actual catch light bounce as it were. So my settings as a rule, I'm shooting at around about 400 ISO when I'm in inside. I'm shooting realistically on a 60th of a second second. And for the groups that we just saw, I'll be photographing anywhere between F4 and F5.6. Um, if I'm using direct flash, I'll still keep to a big group would be more like F6, um, but I'd keep to the same kind of uh, shutter speeds and everything else with it. In very, very dark environments, of course, where there's no ambient light or little ambient light in the scene, you're gonna have to really ramp up the likes of your ISO to bring any natural light back in or open up your aperture more to the likes of 2.8 or beyond uh, to kind of really see more of the natural light illumination. Um, however, more often than not, in a dark scene, you're either going to have to add a secondary flash to illuminate the scene background, or whatever it would be, or you're just going to have to take it on the chin. So have a little play around with that catch light card. Just sit on your sofa, try the little bounce, photograph the fab, uh, the family pet uh, or the kids and just kind of uh, get an understanding of what you can achieve simply and quickly with this quite success, successful little pocket of light for yourself.